JD, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be reassembling a Vel Jure 7750 movement. It's a watch. Here we've got a uh, Rolex I'm showing that I did work on just recently. So I'm doing this uh, video in times five speed because it's four hours of uh, video unless I do this and it's still long this way. So here I've got a mainspring um, in a barrel here and it's an older mainspring so I replace this mainspring. Um, taking out the uh, the mainspring arbor and then just unwinding that mainspring with my fingers and uh, it's probably you probably can watch some videos online to see how this is done a little slower there it is the mainspring is pretty much set so it's no good anymore I'm going to clean the barrel up with uh, lighter fluid now I cleaned the watch movement and my uh, cleaning machine and it worked really well so there's no problem there at all here I'm just using a paintbrush and some lighter fluid and I'm cleaning up the uh, barrel and the barrel cap and the arbor and just making sure they're dried really well. I use watch paper. You saw it really quick there. You're going to have to pause your your video to see what type of watch paper. It's just uh, watchmaker's uh, watch paper. So it really absorbs the uh, liquid from the uh, lighter fluid quite fast. So I just uh, take that lighter fluid. I usually get rid of it or just let it evaporate on its own uh, while not trying to inhale it. So here I'm just using a puffer to dry off the barrel quickly and the lighter fluid leaves no residue or anything it works really well i've used it on uh, pocket watches for years um, and i just love it it's a great way of cleaning a watch but it takes a long time so this movement here in my previous video where i disassembled i actually cleaned this on a proper a pearl watch cleaning machine which is kind of cool all right the next trick is to put some braking grease on here and I do have some uh, braking grease, although I think it was recommended I use different kind of braking grease, which I might pick up. This is braking grease. It's, I think, all natural braking grease. And I don't, as you can see, there's a ton of it left. Um, and you put it on kind of four or five sides of the barrel. And this uh, ensures that the, the, the snake tongue on the end of that uh, mainspring actually uh, has enough friction. So when you wind the watch, it slides. Um, as you, you'll see, the, the, uh, there's the, uh, the new mainspring. It slides, but it doesn't stick completely. So it just gives it enough friction to slide. So here I'm just putting it in the right way. And you press it down on both sides just to make sure it goes in. And then it'll eventually go beyond the lip of that ring that's holding it in and snap into the uh, barrel itself. And then I push the edges of that mainspring just to make sure it's flush with the, uh, with the barrel. Now these mainsprings, there's no need to lubricate these mainsprings because they uh, they won't corrode and they won't stick. So they're modern mainsprings, unlike pocket watch mainsprings. So here I brought myself a device a long time ago, managed to find it, and this device just helps me snap the cap box back on. So here you put it in, and you got to make sure that the hook is aligned with the uh, the hole in the mainspring, so that you can uh, so that it hooks it in place. And then I put the barrel on after. Um, here I'm just, what am I doing here? Well, I did uh, lubricate the, the actual arbor. Um, and that way when I put that uh, in the watch, I know it's lubricated, which is good. So I place it on there and place the, uh, this barrel cap installation device, I'll call it. So uh, that's necessary if you're gonna work on these kinds of watches. And here I'm lubricating as well where that uh, arbor might turn inside the uh, barrel. So, and getting rid of the additional lubrication with uh, Rodico. So I've got the main plate here. I got to enter the main spring into the um, into the, uh, the the plate and I put the uh, what is it called? Yeah, I put the escape wheel in uh, first then I put the um, second wheel and then I put the right after that I put the third wheel in and then I put the uh, great wheel in and make sure I'm uh, lubricating all the parts here. And then the stop lever goes in, lubricate where that stop lever is. And then uh, place that in nicely uh, in the right uh, location, um, well secured. Now I can take the uh, oil, the oil all the areas, oil all the points, and then uh, put that uh, crown wheel in place, I guess, next. Well, first I had to put in the plate. Right, then, then I'll put the crown wheel in. So that's the uh, barrel and train wheel bridge. And I'm, that's fully jeweled and I'm putting that in place now. 
Um, and that'll be followed by uh, putting in that crown wheel. Make sure that I'm lubricating all parts of that. And then uh, so it's in, in great condition and ready for the next part. And there we go. I got to make sure I screw that down after too. So I got to get all the lubrication points. I use a, a HP 1300 as it gets closer, but I use a, a, a little heavier oil there. Uh, or lighter oil where the jewels are. So I made sure this is screwed in nicely. And here I'm just cleaning up the area of that uh, where the crown wheel goes and actually just above the barrel where the ratchet wheel goes. Cleaning that up nicely with a piece, piece of peg wood so that it's um, all ready for the parts to go in. Yes. There, got that all oiled up nicely and where the barrel arbor is sticking out. There, get that cleaned up nicely, and that new little pointer stick works really well, by the way. And I got some Rotico just showing you I'm using brand new Rotico in this watch, so I don't get any old Rotico. You can bend it and twist it and do all kinds of stuff. It's man's best friend, Rotico. So I tighten the screws down once I'm sure that all of the uh, parts and the pivots, I can see them. Um, and I check that before, to, just to make sure that all the pivots are showing through, so you don't can uh, press down on the plate and then snap a pivot. Uh, that would ruin your day. I don't think I've done that ever. Uh, so I'm pretty anal retentive when it comes to that. And again, applying all the right oil in the right place. Um, and I'm applying where it's supposed to be. So there's the crown wheel and that's going in there. Um, and then I'm oiling the rim of the crown wheel. And that's just before I put the crown wheel core in. That's that core there and line that up because there's two screws that need to go in place for the crown wheel core. There's screw number one and I tighten those screws up um, and I tighten them up a bit and then make sure that that crown wheel still rotates and then I tighten them up again just to make sure it's uh, there I go back again and tightening them more and check the movement of the crown wheel and it's all good Jerry all good. So the next thing I'm doing is putting in the ratchet wheel and that winds up the uh, mainspring in the barrel and putting the screw in for the ratchet wheel and pretty much done with this side of the watch after I'm finished this. So I think I've got to flip this watch around and do some more work on it. Yeah, we'll give it a little wind there and see, see what it looks like. So there's one more wheel I think I decided to put in here. Uh, did I flip that watch yet? I think I did, yes. So here I'm putting in the winding pinion and the sliding pinion, both, or crown, crown pinion or something, whatever that's called. Uh, and I'm oiling those as well just to uh, make sure that they're in good shape. And I'm oiling the stem because I'm going to reinstall the stem on the watch so I can uh, work with the setting mechanism on that watch. So putting oil where needed on the stem. And again, that's the blue oil I've said before, right? So it's a medium oil that you use on these watches. You guys can look that up. There's videos on how to do that. I just switched to a different movement holder here because the movement holder I have didn't give me right the crock correct access to the watch so I did that and I'm just oiling all the points here on the watch getting prepared for you know putting in more parts as they say so there's a lot of oiling you got to do on a um, on a watch like this it's not easy I oil 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 and more oil and just when I've thought I've got enough oil I oil some more so I think this part is the driver cannon pinion that I'm installing on the watch, uh, I think it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And then I've already installed the yoke spring. I think I didn't take off to clean it. And here I'm rotating that uh, the driver pinion to make sure that it's lubricated, comes in two parts and that part on the other part needs to spin. And then I'm pressing it in. That's a little tricky, but you gotta press it in because it's friction fit into the watch. Now I'm putting in the rocking bar. Again, put that in place. Um, and then again, it's a tricky, this is, this is, I gotta put the springs in here and separate the springs to be on either side of that rocking bar to make sure it actually rocks. So it's a little bit tricky to, to adjust that. I've assembled the setting lever and I'm putting that in place. Um, I already oiled it and just lay that one down nicely. And then that is followed by the yoke that I put in place here and that goes right in there. Without that yoke, you're not going to move that um, clutch wheel back and forth on the uh, on the stem. 
and I'm lubricating the areas once again. I spent a lot of time lubricating. And then I put in the setting wheel in place, and then that next comes after I've lubricated the posts there um, to accept the cannon pinion. I believe the next thing I put in is the setting lever jumper an intermediate setting wheel that's part of that jumper. But again, I'm just lubricating all the posts that need to be lubricated for uh, for installation of, of the future parts. A lot of parts in this movement. I'm telling you, a lot of parts. And see now I'm attaching that intermediate setting wheel into the setting uh, wheel jumper to put that in place. And there's two screws that hold that in. So I'm aligning it uh, properly to make sure that's perfectly aligned and getting ready for the screws. So after I'm finished this work, uh, I'm going to line this up perfectly. And I'm using my little, uh, it's got an electronic probe, it's called, but uh, I got that off of Mark. I saw him using one. And these things are really good for holding the parts down. It has a pointy end on the other side. Uh, I don't know why I never got one of these before. I used to use a, uh, a stick to do it, like a toothpick or something, to hold it down, and it just wasn't right. So, so here I'm just making sure everything works. I'm pulling it out and lubricating all of the appropriate parts here before I flip this movement over. Um, the plate's in, all the parts are lubricated, and testing it just to make sure it winds. So now I've spun the watch around. Now I'm putting in the pallet fork. It's always tricky. Again, watch the pivots, make sure they're through the bridge. And I've got the bridge here. It's a jeweled bridge. So I really have to make sure that that pallet fork is working before I screw that down tight. So I didn't have a lot of real estate with my uh, my tweezers to get in there with this movement holder. I gotta find myself a little bit better of a movement holder that's got doesn't have those lips on the edge that kind of get in the way. So so I'm screwing the plate down lightly here and then I'll just uh, make sure I'll touch that pallet fork a few times, make sure it's in, then I'll actually visually check the uh, top of that uh, jewel to see if the pivot's coming through because that, that would destroy your that would ruin your day if you accidentally squish that. So and after I've, there I go testing it, making sure that's right, pulling it up, and then I'll tighten those screws down. Um, and after that, we're all good. And then I've got to uh, do some more oiling. Guess what? More oiling is required. Um, I'm not going to tell you all the posts. You can look this up. But I've done a, a ton of oiling on this movement. Sitting nicely, I had to go get something, obviously, because I'm not in scene. Tighten it up again. And now I'm ready to put the balance in. So this is the scary part. I pitched the pallet fork over to one side and then I let the, uh, the impulse jewel slide into the mouth of the pallet fork. And I always have my finger there just in case this thing slides over. And guess what? The watch is working. I use the uh, mainspring ratchet with my screwdriver, I think, to give it a little bit of power or you can wind it. And now I've got to just uh, lubricate that jewel on the top. So you want to take out both parts, separate the cap from the jewel, lubricate the cap, put the jewel back in place. I stuck them both together. And then you put them both uh, in place like that. And there's a little tiny uh, shock, uh, Inca block shock spring on top that you got to put back in place. And then the, that uh, the jewel and everything is ready to rock and roll. Now I'm putting in the hammer cam jumper. And you'll see it's a little tricky. It's got a screw holes that uh, move, the screws move. And this is the chronograph cam. So this is a device that, that kind of unlocks and unlocks the chronograph part of the movement. And uh, it's got to be oiled on the edges. And again, I'm using a heavier uh, oil. It's kind of a grease to, uh, to do that. And again, you can look that up to figure it is. Now the spring. So this is the operating lever spring, and it's a hell of a thing to get in if you don't do a lot of these chronographs. But uh, I managed to tuck it in, and uh, the two, uh, when you push um, either of those buttons, that spring uh, ensures that uh, it pushes them back into position, actually. So it's just a spring for those, uh, the chronograph buttons. And I'm just farting with this to get it in place. It's a little tricky. You just put it in one side, and you get it in the other side and test it a little bit. And now I've got to flip that movement over to do some more work on this side. I think I just reset it into this one and took it out of the other one. So it was not easy to get in place. I was keeping a close eye on the um, on the uh, movement so I wouldn't get near that uh, the balance, basically, and put that in place. A little bit tricky. And of course, more oil is required. 
um, testing those springs. And this device is called a switch. There was corrosion on it, so I got my nice little uh, pencil I used to get rid of corrosion. I'll show you that really quickly what that number is on that Bergeron device. There it is, 6240. Um, and it's really good at getting rid of corrosion. Then I make sure I clean it up with Rodico. And now I've got to oil it a bit before I install it on in the watch movement. And uh, there we go. Let's get that in place. Good to go. Good to go. Leave the minute counter driving wheel was the next uh, west next wheel to go in there. Actually, I'm not sure if that's the driving wheel. I'll have to check that because that seems to be uh, there is a driving wheel there. So I put that driving wheel in place, and that's the lock for the driving wheel. Um, and I screw that down after I set it in place. And I'm looking for parts here. I had the parts nicely organized in the bin there, as you could see in different, so I wouldn't lose anything, because losing parts is not a good thing. And I'm hunting. I'm parts hunting right now. I still have a screw sitting there. I wonder what that's for. <laughs> I think that's for that, uh, that lock. Screw down the lock. There we go. Put some pressure on that. Screw that down. I think this was a pain in the butt because it was very hard to hold. So you could see me farting around with that and see that drop it in there. I was getting pretty pissed off at this point in time. I said, well, maybe I'll just use this to help me with that and fart around with it again. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had that problem with a screw, but it was just pissing me off. So I said, okay, I'm going to hold the screw at Rodico. Then I realized it was too high and Rodico was in the way. They said, well, I'll do this. And finally, I got that screw close enough and screwed that in. That was a pain in the butt, let me tell you. And this is the operating lever that goes in. I'm oiling it appropriately. And this operating lever is pushed by one of the chrono buttons into the cam that actually uh, works the chrono. So the chrono function on the watch. So I'm screwing that in nicely, nice and tight. Uh, make sure it's operating. There we go. Look at that. It works. The chronograph wheel friction part. This can get trickier because it tucks under one plate and then onto the other so and then I get it ready to put that plate on now I'm putting on the chronograph bridge and this was a little tricky because there was a screw underneath that bridge um, and I had to actually remove that screw and then screw that through the top and then the plate as well so they didn't tell me that in the instructions I had to remove that and I realized there's already a screw down there so how the heck do I put a screw in there so I had to do a redo so the minute jumper wheel I never took off a little spring that's on the side. I think you can see it sort of, uh, where is it? It's, it's on the back of this uh, movement right now. It's a long spring. Well, now you can see it in the front. Yeah, then that's the minute. It just basically drags along the minute uh, counter wheel or the minute wheel. And so I'm screwing this down right now, um, and making sure it's nice and tight. And all the screws are in place. So there we go. Now I've got this thing. And this is tricky because it, there's a... a another wheel you got to throw into the hole here and make sure that that's in the right place so it's a uh, very tricky another gear I'm gonna throw that in, in a second reduction wheel going in and then the last thing is that little tiny weight looks like what something Arnold would use and it's called the oscillating pinion that's a pain in the butt to put in. now goes the chronograph wheel right through the center uh, made sure that was cleaned up and oiled properly and then this just goes right down through the center um, and a, a little spring in the middle uh, just uh, not sure how that functions but it helps it along anyway and I just bounce it a bit make sure that's in well and then I hear I'm sticking some uh, Rodico in there to actually stop the movement so that other spring doesn't move so here I'm putting the clutch in and I've got to put the minute counting wheel in, in a second but that's the clutch um, and I'm making sure that's in place nicely and again I've got to screw that down um, a lot of parts on a, on a uh, chronograph so using my electronic or electronic uh, stick the stick I use uh, in other videos I've said this is the million dollar stick so it's uh, worth a lot I think it's really nice and then you've got to make sure there's a spring that you got to make sure is in place that's why I'm farting with this um, and I've got that in place right now and there we go, I'm trying to stop the movement again. And that clutch moves that other wheel back and forth. And that's the minute counting wheel going in, into place. And again, cleaning that up a bit and uh, making sure I've applied the right oil. 
on all the wheels. Put in the reversing wheel. There we go, that goes into place. That was a little tricky to put in, by the way, because the, the jewel's there and it's hard to see. That's MC Hammer Time. So this is the hammer. Um, and again, you can look these up. I can't explain the functions as I go through this video really quickly. So I put the hammer, it's hammer time. Da -na 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 hammer time. So who danced better, MC Hammer or Michael Jackson? I'll take all comments on that if you watch this whole video. Now this is the automatic device bridge that goes on top here. I'm really careful putting this down. So this is the one that goes over that little Arnold Schwarzenegger gear, I think. Uh, yeah, no, it goes over the reversing wheel. Yeah, so there we go. That's uh, put in place again. I got to make sure that's dropped properly. And here, uh, this is, I think, where I realized there was already a screw in there. I was like, why, why isn't it dropping? It wasn't dropping because if you see next to that jewel pointing towards you, there's a hole there, and there was already a screw underneath there from the other plate. So that screw you shouldn't put on. You should leave that screw out, and then you put the plate on after. So I did that and made sure everything was in place, and then I was able to screw this thing down nicely. So I'm screwing the uh, automatic device bridge down and just checking that the gears are in fact working. Nothing is being compressed. So I'm putting the hammer spring in right now. Again, MC, time, MC Hammer Time. So you just tuck that in, and then you pull it over the top of that plate. Uh, there's technique involved. And I've got to put in that clutch spring in a second, unless I already did it. Can't remember. And then more oiling. Guess what? More oiling. It's a lot of work in doing this. This is a four-hour video compressed into, I'm not sure, 45 minutes. So, so I'm just making sure all these parts are appropriately oiled. Um, and more oiling. And then, oh, no, look at that, more oiling. I think, oh, clean up the extra oil again with my Rodico, and then get that spring in. And my friends is the clutch spring, so I had to make sure that's in place. And then you're freaking out until you put another plate on. When you're putting a spring down, it's, it's kind of freaky until you can actually put a plate on top and the thing won't fly out on you. That's what I really worry about when I'm doing watch work, so. And there we go, I'm checking the function, and it works. Oh my goodness, this is a good day. And, oh, more oiling. And I'm oiling the edge of that wheel. And and uh, as required, by the way, I'm not inventing where to oil. And there we've got the movement, and I put it down on the pad nice and carefully because I want to work on this side. Here I'm uh, removing the, the lower balance jewel to actually take off the cap, and then oil it, and then put it all back again. So I did that. Took it off, oiled it, put it back. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. There we go. Put the cage back down. And then that jewel is done. I've made uh, those settings for jewels, but not for this type of watch, for pocket watches. And some of my other videos where I'm using my lathe. So that was that. I'm putting on the cannon pinion over here. It's not the typical tight cannon pinion. And the minute wheel goes down as well, and they're meshed in nicely. I'd flip the watch around already, and I'm checking to make sure those wheels actually turn and doing a little bit of oiling. I'd adjust that. It popped up a bit. And that's the hour wheel going in there. And again, make sure it all works. Just turn that movement. Turn the uh, stem there and make sure everything works. Now I'm putting in the intermediate calendar wheel, driving wheel. Now this is the date uh, wheel I'm putting in, and it aligns with a mark on the, uh, on the movement, a little tiny mark. And then this aligns... You point straight at the center of that other one, of the, the, the jewel that's there, and this is the uh, the day date. So this is the date wheel I just put in there. And of course, guess what I'm doing now? More lubrication. You can never lubricate too much. Actually, you can. So I'm lubricating as required by spec for this particular watch movement. Now this is the hour counting wheel. I've already I've lubricated the edge there, just the very edge of it, so it spins around. Again, take off extra lube, put that in and place that in nicely. There we go. It's all ready to rock and roll. Now the hour hammer goes in. It just tucks under that wheel, as you can see. And I screw that down, and then I put in the hour hammer operating lever after. And uh, so I'm making sure that's oiled on the edges and get rid of any excess oil. And then the hour hammer operating lever needs to go in, but that's not it. That's the hour counter clock that I've put in. So I'll put it in the operating lever in a second 
and that little the nubby goes into the jobby doohickey. I had to say it once, and then the operating lever goes in. I think I might have forgot a part there or something. <laughs> anyway, more oil, more oil, and then the spring. This is a nasty one. This is the hour hammer spring and again. I want to put that in. I don't want it to fly anywhere. And then after, see, I notice that my movement is rocking, so I put it into my Myers number 58 movement holder so it's solid while I move that spring around. And now that I've got that spring down, I do have to oil it where it's touching very carefully. Um, do I, did I oil that? I think I oiled it. No, i got to put the plate on. There we go. So this is the date platform I'm putting down, and I'm making sure that it that, uh, that our wheels lined up properly and just push that thing down and then I got to screw that into place so and just making sure everything is good look at it press the buttons I was uh, making sure the buttons were working and then putting the screws in for that and uh, just getting that thing all set up nicely and there we go put that together screw that in uh, and then get that basically more oiling you can never have too much oiling right so i had to oil a bit more um there we go nicely oiled nicely put in place and press those buttons everything is good there yeah that's good and there we go i'm going inside there to make sure that those are properly lubricated so there you go this is the double corrector that's going in here. So that's lined up and it's, uh, I believe, a single screw to keep that in place. So I'm uh, getting that organized here so you guys can see what I'm up to. And then, then I realized there is a, uh, I already put a part in, but I had to take it out because you couldn't put the date, the date wheel in until you took this out. So I took this plate off. I think I took this off. Because I, I realized after I tried to put the date the date wheel in, it wouldn't fit because it's got to tuck underneath that. So it won't tuck underneath after you've done it. So I took it off, then I put the date wheel in. Then I put the date, I think that's the date hammer. Oh, it's the date jumper, you moron. It's the date jumper. So there's a day jumper and a date jumper. That's the date, the day, the date one there on the side. And then the, the other one is gives you the... Uh, the day like Wednesday Tuesday this watch did not have that but the jumper is in there anyway in case it wants to be added in the future but the face doesn't require it now I got to put that plate in because that plate then goes over the uh, the little knobby ju do ju hickeys <laughs> the knobby do hickeys on the uh, on that the date wheel so I'm putting that in place and making sure it's riding perfectly and then I've got to move that spring over. You got to really pay attention to what you're doing here. One one little movement uh, wrong and you screw up the watch. This is the date jumper maintaining plate I'm putting in. The date jumper maintaining plate. So I'm making sure that that's aligned. I think here my head was a bit screwed up. I'd already put the spring in for the uh, date uh, jumper and I wanted to get that on fast before that spring flew on my carpet somewhere. So spent too many years on my hands and knees looking for watch parts. So uh, I'm, again, I'm using my amazing million dollar stick. The million dollar stick. Dun, 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 dun. That's the million dollar man, if you remember that, if you're old enough to remember that. So there you go, tightening that down. And now I'm putting the face on and I'm making sure I don't screw the pivots up. So I'm aligning it and I got to make sure that the, uh, there, I got to flip that around. Here I'm trying to make sure the dial feet are lined up properly and then I push it right down. There's only one way to put it in and then there's little locks for the dial feet and you just push those on the side, you push those over. It's pretty handy actually because old watches have screws. So now I'm just checking that the date, the date actually sets on it. I'm putting it in that other movement holder I have that's a little more flat which is pretty good. So here I've got the case and I'm checking the case out and I realized that hey, this case needs significant cleaning so I'm unscrewing the uh, the pushers, and I didn't bother showing all of that, but they're a little bit of pain because of the angle, right? But I screw the pushers, and there's the springs and the pushers there. So those go into the ultrasonic cleaner. There's the dirt that I needed to deal with, and here I'm just removing the gasket and checking it out. I had a lot of dirt in there. There's my ultrasonic cleaner. Throw that in. Here the uh, actual seconds hand 
I screwed this up taking it out because there's a special tool and the pipe from it came off. So I used my staking set. I put a little bit of Loctite on that and then I lined that up and I used a flat stake uh, to push that down. So here I'm just making sure that that stake goes in. I pushed it down and then I turned it around and I put a stump in there to turn it around uh, to, to, get, to make sure I wasn't bending the seconds hand. So here's the stump I'm going to use here. Line that up properly and then put that on there and then that the stake I'm using will go right over the top of that because I already put it in but I wanted to make sure it was in tight. And I've tapped that with the hammer. It's too bad you can't hear the hammer noise. Move that around so I don't lose it and now that second hand is ready and I waited I think went for coffee with my son and two hours later is when I actually installed it. So I came back to do the installation. Wow. So here I'm all proud of my work. P-R-O-D. That's how my granddaughter would spell it. Just like me. P-R-O-D. Proud. Um, and here I'm putting the hands on. So I, I need a new hand press. So I tell my wife there's one more tool. I got this cheap AliExpress hand press. I just don't like it. It's not accurate enough. So you hear I'm farting, out, farting with these... Uh, very small hands to make sure that they're actually lined up properly. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure that that is all nicely lined up. And I've got enough. They're not not going to provide too much friction. That one might have been down a little bit too low. I'm not sure. We'll see. If there's a problem with it, I can fix it later. So, so here I'm just doing the initial press down and adjusting the tip of the hand. And then using this device, I had to change the, uh, the knobby on the end to press that down. And so that's the, that's two hands down. So cool hand, Luke. And then there's the third hand. These hands are all the same. So there's no different hand. So it wasn't longer or anything like that. So this is 300 meters, but this hand counts to 12. So I'm assuming it's like a, a month hand or a day hand or something. I'm not sure. 12 o'clock. We'll see. Anyway. <laughs> so there it is. I uh, pushed that down and it's nicely aligned. Anyway, in the future, if there's any alignment, further alignment that Bill wants me to do, he can call me up and I can take it apart and realign. Okay, here again, my anal retentivity is in play. So I line up that hour hand, look at it, look at it again, push it down, nudge it, look at it again, push it down, nudge it, make sure the right end piece is in there to push that down. Um, so I'm farting with end pieces right now. So I just wanted to make sure it's aligned like that. That way I can just very carefully, you want the hour and the minute hand to be lined up. That's the most important. Most people that have chronograph movements, like I have, never use the chronograph movement. Like I, I don't need it, right? Why would I need it? I actually have an Apple uh, Ultra that I use right now for actually taking, keeping time. So. So I don't need it that way. So there's the minute hand. So I'm lining those up too and making sure that that's 100% aligned. And this one here was a little trickier. I had to use Rodico to actually hold it in place. Turn that around and then push that down just enough that it has a bit of friction. That way I can push the pusher down on that and then use the, use the tip of my uh, screwdriver or, or tweezers actually to just nudge that minute hand over so it's absolutely aligned with the hour hand. Putting the hands in is a trick and you kind of get used to it. So there I'm aligning it and looking down on it and just playing a little game of NHL Montreal Canadian hockey on that thing before I push it down completely. Look at it again, work on it, then I push it down. I'm saying, is that good? Am I good? Let's see if it works. Oh my God, it works and it's completely aligned, which is a nice thing. So again, uh, Bill, uh, I want to make sure that everything was aligned. I think when I put the seconds hand on, it was perfectly aligned, but when it snaps back into place, it moves a bit, <laughs> which is not good. So it's a little off, I think, but I don't think you'll be pissed off. There's a strap in the case. I did go downstairs into the Basamante, and I redid that case. So I went down there and I buffed the crap out of that case. Um, here I'm, I'm just cleaning the edges of the movement after it's been buffed and... It's, uh, you know, I ultrasonically clean, then buffed completely. As you can see, it's shiny as heck. And I'm getting little pieces of, of, uh, of the buffing chalk off this. So and I think I used gray for the buffing just so I can get rid of all the scratches. So I'm getting rid of that. And here I'm just oiling around where the, uh, look at that, a Canadian maple leaf on my hat. <laughs> then that, I didn't realize I was wearing my hat. I'm an idiot. 
Uh, I think I just threw it in the floor there. So now I've got to put the uh, put the uh, springs back in for the pushers. And this is followed by just inserting the, the uh, pushers in the right way. I was trying to figure this out and it was a little bit of a P.O.B. as they call it, pain in the Batinsky. But I finally looked at it and my little tiny pea brain figured out which way they go. And I pressed those in and put those screws back in. And those screws, it's a great design actually, because the screws actually become the pushers of the watch. So it's a brilliant design. I've seen others with clips that I've worked on. And I did buy a bunch of clips once because I lost one on the carpet. So here I'm putting in the seconds hand that I had to repair. Now I ended up breaking that second hand. I was ho hoping I wouldn't have to buy a new one, but the pipe just needed to be riveted back onto the seconds hand. And I used Loctite as well to make sure that that second hand wouldn't move. Um, but I think you'll see it's just like a micro millimeter away from being straight up and down because I did set it to be straight up and down, as you can see. And I played with it a lot to make sure it was straight up and down. And then when it snapped back, it moves just a little tiny bit, a hair. So I think that could be adjusted. And if it pisses Bill off, I can I can uh, fix that as well. Because right now it's perfectly on 12. So here I'm uh, making sure that everything is fine with the movement. Um, you can't place that down, but I've got to take the stem out. So you push the button to take the stem out. And then I've got to case the movement. And to case it, you just put the movement or the uh, case right over the... Uh, the movement and make sure the the pushers are not in the way and then what am I gonna do now and I'm oiling something right now I can't remember what it was oh yeah the stem I'm oiling the stem so you push that in and you press the little button and then you push the stem in the first time it didn't work and I had to do it again after actually this is the ring that goes over the top it's like a chapter ring but the ring goes over the top uh, providing the right separation for the movement in the case and you got to make sure that's in nice and tight and I knew that I had to press that button again to do that. No, nope, still not in. Press the button. And now I got I got me some action. So I made sure that that there it is there. And I did press a few buttons to make sure they're working. I'm kind of showing you. There we go. And then I stop it. And when you're using the chronograph, make sure you're doing it 10 to or 10 after when you press that button again. Because it'll swing like crazy to center. And uh, here I've got the uh, gasket. And I'm going to use this made in china gasket uh, oiler or, and so that's nicely uh, lubricated or oiled uh, and make sure that gasket's in place perfectly and all the way around there we go and the uh, the case back had this metal kind of ring that was uh, moved around i think and and uh, here we go and i'm i'm saying okay which screw do i need to use for the actual um, rotor so there are the screws used for the clips. So I put those screws in place and you see how I pick the head up there and then put it straight down. Now remember this video, I did times five on this video, so it's a lot slower than this in real life, folks. Um, and I tighten that down onto the clip. Did the same thing here, drop the clip in, get the screw out, hold it on the head this time, turn it around in my hands, and then drop it in. If this was slow, you'd see you gotta have really good tweezer dexterity to do this stuff. It's a uh, and then I wanted to put the case back on here just to make sure everything kind of worked before I put the rotor in. So I did that, used my ball, tightened it up, turned it around, pressed some buttons, see if they work. There's the, uh, there it's going around and I wanted to make sure it got the full uh, 30 seconds. I think I stop it at 5.2 here. And then, uh, there we go, and then hit the reset button. It works, which is a beautiful thing. Then take that off. So you always put the rotor in after the watch is actually cased, uh, just in case you're curious. So I get that rotor in place and then put that rotor in and then get the rotor screw and then screw that down nice and tight. Um, and the rotor was in actually really good condition, as you can see. And I actually wound the watch up a bit and I watched the wheels. I watched the ratchet wheel over the mainspring to make sure that ratchet wheel is actually turning. And I could see it turning, so I said, okay, it is winding, which is nice. Put that case back back on, and there I've got some action happening here. And the watch is, in fact, working. Now i got to put that strap on. I cleaned the strap. I, I, I went down with my polishing uh, wheel, and I polished the crap out of the strap. The, uh, the, the, they were bent a bit, so I had to straighten them uh, those up. I can't even remember what those things are called. <laughs> they're they're uh, Anyway... The cotter, not the cotter pins, the pins for the strap, anyway. 
They're a little tiny bit bent, which over time that might happen, but they're very good quality pins, so I didn't want to have to replace them because I don't think I had pins with the knobbies that were the right size. These knobbies were the right size uh, for, the, for that movement for the case, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, I could reuse those because they were actually in good condition. So you'll see me in a second uh, after I put this one on. Uh, make sure it goes on right. I put it on my wrist to make sure I got the snap on the right side. And then I farted with it here, but in fact, if you flip the watch around, you go from the other side, it's a lot easier. And I figured that out in a few seconds. Got it all together, and then I had to take my hammer. It's hammer time again. And straighten this one out a bit. And look, there we go. It's straightened up a little bit, not a lot, but enough to... Uh, make sure that it works perfectly and then I took it from the correct side this time and put it back in place. So that was it. That's my video and it was um, fun doing it and I hope you enjoyed the video. It's uh, done in fast time. Uh, maybe you can take it, slow it down and, and uh, do it in slow time. So I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share the video and there you go Bill. She's all ready and polished and looks like gold Jerry.